pretty kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. I am so pleased to see you guys today. I can report that my sojo is back on form. I was getting a bit worried there for a minute because it's not like me to go for very long without sewing something and the desire just wasn't there and I think it's because I've been so busy at work and I had a lot of other things going on and usually the first thing that gets thrown out the window is all the stuff that you enjoy doing which is a shame isn't it and then you end up feeling even more miserable because sewing is like self-care for me it's something that I do to relax and unwind it's a bit like therapy it helps me to uh, be mindful and yeah just totally just feel better about everything and when I stop sewing I get a little bit overwhelmed and everything was just all getting on top of me but You'll be glad to hear I am back on form. Um, welcome to anybody who has just subscribed. Thank you very much. And hi to everybody else. How are you all? Are you enjoying the uh, summer or winter, depending on where you are in the world? Um, the UK has had some lovely weather, which is another big change since the last time I saw you because it was hacking it down with rain every single day. And I think that did not help with my um, funk. So yeah, I'm out of it now, you'll be glad to hear. Today I am going to tell you what I made in June, which wasn't a great deal of stuff, I'll be honest. Um, I think I've shown some of you, some of the things I've already made. So the mustard um, kinder cardigan, I think was a June make. Um, I have got something brand new to show you though, which is the Minerva Crafts blogger make. So um, for those of you that don't know, I have, have been accepted as part of the Blogger Network, which means that um, in return for fabric, I have to write a blog post. And um, it's just a fab way for Minerva Crafts to advertise all their wonderful fabrics. And actually, it's a really, really fun thing to do. And I have not realized just how much I would enjoy writing a blog post. I've never done it before. So um, yeah, it was good fun thinking about what to ask for in terms of fabric and what patterns to use. So um, to start with, I have made three things for the blog post and they're all kind of special because the blog post is about my nan and um, if you have been with me for the long term and you know that my nan passed away just after Christmas, um, you'll have seen that on my vlogs and um, I have this really special memory of a dress that she bought me from CNA, which is um, no longer in the UK anymore. I know that they still have CNA stores elsewhere in Europe, but no longer in the UK. Um, she took me shopping uh, for a holiday that we were going on to Butlins, and I picked the most outrageous sort of rockabilly style dress that had, I think it had a black t-shirt top, but I remember the skirt because it was bright pink like fuchsia like the color of this cushion and it had black polka dots all over it and I loved that dress and I begged her for it and I can remember her sort of negotiating with me because I think it was quite pricey and it wasn't really what she thought that my mum had in mind for her to buy but she bought it for me and I wore that dress to death I just loved it and um, so polka dots are kind of special and I saw on the list of fabrics that I could pick from a scuba po polka dot fabric and I thought, well, that just would be lovely to make myself and my girls um, something special out of polka dot fabric. So what I did was um, I made the girls' um, skirts first. I wanted to make them something that was um, sort of twirly and swishy. Uh, scuba, if you haven't sewed with it before, it's quite a thick... Um, fabric and there are different varying qualities to scuba so you can get some quite lightweight scubas um, that are floaty and other scubas that are quite stiff and heavy and when this scuba arrived it is one of the thicker kind of scubas um, so I was thinking about what to make and I went back to a tried and true pattern that I have used many times for my girls so it's a, a, a knit pattern it's actually a tweens pattern. That's kind of scary that my eldest is now classed as a tween. She's going to secondary school soon. 
Um, so this is 6241 and it's a new look pattern and it comes with a t-shirt, a raglan sleeve t-shirt top and two variations of skirt. So one which is just a yoke and sort of like um, a half circle skirt and then the one at the bottom there has got pleats and I've yet to make the pleated one. The girls really enjoy wearing this um, shaped skirt. So uh, I made two matching skirts for my girls and I will show you them now. So this is the smaller of the two, it might be easier to see. So as you can see, it's got this yoke on the top. It's the easiest skirt in the world to sew if you're new to knit fabrics and you've got kids. This is an awesome skirt to start with. You literally have two yokes and a front and a back, but they're exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which way round you wear this skirt. But you can see because if it's cut uh, as a half circle, it's actually got a really nice shape to it. And when you wear it, it's really swishy. So um, I'll pop in, uh, there'll obviously be photographs on my blog post. The blog post is going live in September, I believe. Um, so you can um, hop across to Minerva Crofts a bit later on in the year and read what I wrote about this pattern. But this skirt is so easy to sew. I would definitely recommend having a go at one of these if you've got kids. All I did with the um, hem was I just overlocked the edge, then turned it up and did some twin needling. And then you just make an elastic channel for the waist. Same thing really. Overlock the edge, folded it down, twin needled, threaded the elastic round. Job done. Uh, really super quick, super simple, but the girls love wearing them. And this is the, the bigger one. So you can see, slightly longer and quite a lot bigger. Um, that one was a size, which size did I make? 12 I think so the pattern goes from 8 to 16 years so um, but then you can check the measurements to see which one fits the best but uh, this is for a 12 year old and the waist on that was 25 and a half inches um, and the younger one I made is a size 8 so that's still slightly big because my daughter is not quite 8 yet and she's a bit of a string bean so <laughs> they'll last they'll last so that was that one and then when I was thinking about what to make myself out of that polka dot fabric um, I really wanted something that would have that sort of 50s flavour to it um, and the only sort of skirt that I could think of, knit skirt, that I really love the shape of and it's another one that I've made a couple of times before is the Tilly and the Buttons BB so um, I'll see if I can find a picture of it here. The BB comes as a dress and as a skirt. Uh, it's typical that you can't find the right page when you're looking, isn't it? Here we are. So this is the pinafore version. And um, the skirt version, they've got colour blocked in here with stripes, which is not really my sort of thing. But the shape of this skirt is lovely. I'll show you the line drawing. Um, so there's a line drawing there. That one has uh, a split in the front, which I haven't done. I've just made mine plain. So again, super, super simple make. You literally have four pattern pieces in a waistband for this skirt. And um, there's no elastic in the waist. There is these panels that you have a seam running down either side of the front and the back. So the front and the back of this skirt are identical. And um, the only change I made to the pattern for this is I added four inches to the length because I really wanted that sort of midi length 50s vibe for this skirt because I think I'm going to probably wear this more in the autumn. Scuba is quite a thick fabric. It's not very breathable. It's not sort of, you can get a bit hot and sweaty in it to be honest. And I think it's more of an autumn make this skirt, but it looks awesome with a little cardigan so I will insert a picture of me wearing it here. So there you go, those were the things I made in June, um, as I said I think I made the kinder cardigan in June as well, hop back to my last video if you want to see that 
but otherwise I really wasn't in the mood for making but that's all changed now because there is a stack of stuff on that chair over there that I am itching to get on with. So um, the first thing I have found when I was looking through my patterns is this one here which is um, 6389 and this is another new look pattern, it's another tweens pattern. Um, I'm finding more and more that I'm having to go with the tweens because um, my daughter's style is changing, she's not really into cutesy girly stuff much anymore and this jumpsuit is really lovely so um, I want to make her this but this is for a woven fabric, I think the fabrics they suggest are uh, batik chalet, lightweight cotton types, crepe de chine gauze, linen, um, none of which I've got in my stash surprisingly even though I have a monster stash so this one is on my radar for a summer make and I'm not going to put any time scales on these because I've said to you previously plans videos um, I love to share my plans with you but I don't like the pressure of having to get stuff done and it kind of puts me off and makes me not want to make it I need to go with the flow of my sort of inspiration and, and what I feel like doing at the time so that pattern is on my radar, hopefully some point in the summer um, I will whip up one of those for my um, eldest girl because her jumpsuit that I made her a couple of years ago is now too small. So the next pattern I've got on my list of wanting to make is a birder pattern. This is 6427 and it's got a really cute side tie so you can see on the line drawing there there's a couple of variations there's a long sleeve, a short sleeve, a short sleeve with little bows in and then you've got this really cute side tie and I think I would like to make view B which is this one here um, I have got plenty of really cute jersey fabric in my stash to make t-shirts out of but I'm struggling with the urge to buy the new Tilly and the Buttons pattern with the little tie at the neck the name of which escapes me right now but I'll pop it down here I've already got this pattern, I should use this pattern, but you know what it's like when something new comes out and everyone's making it and it's really cute and actually it's not the same as this, it's kind of different, so I might buy the Tilly one and make this one, but um, yeah, plenty of cute jerseys in my stash to do that one with, but I'm not sure which yet, so this is on my radar too. My other plans are a little bit more structured because I do actually have fabric to go with them. So the next one that I fancy making over the summer is a simplicity pattern. This is 1023 and I have made this one before and I think I've shared this one with you before as well. So you've got, it's a project runway pattern, you've got um, leggings and then several different variations of dress, some with a high-low hem, some with net, um, leggings to go underneath. Uh, long sleeves with a collar, short sleeves like a t-shirt, so it's quite um, quite a nice pattern for variations and my middle daughter who is seven uh, really enjoys wearing loose sort of jersey dresses, really comfortable in those so I thought what I would do is make the short sleeve version and then just go for a simple skirt on the bottom and I have got this amazing jersey that I bought some time ago I think, maybe at the beginning of the year and it's got toucans on it and flamingos and palm leaves and cactuses and pretty much all the goodness on this fabric so yeah I want to make that into a little dress for my seven year old and um, to be honest with you I'm kind of tempted to make myself a t-shirt out of what's left over because even if I didn't wear it outside because uh, I'm not sure if it's a bit childish for a grown woman um, it would make good sleepwear so if there's enough left I might do that I think I've got a couple of meters here actually or maybe a meter and a half so it's really nice quality this came from Louis D Fabrics um, I love their selection of kids jersey I haven't found another fabric shop that's got such amazing jerseys for kids um, and I bought this like I said think at the beginning of the year. So there's that plan. The next one is um, inspired by the Ogden cami. So I'm wearing an Ogden cami today. If you can see it's got really cute, you've probably seen this a hundred times all over the internet, but 
it's a really lovely pattern it's um nice and loose and breezy and you can get away with a nice novelty print with uh, a cami i think i've had quite a few compliments on on my swans um so what happened was mum and i were going through her sewing shed she has got uh, a workshop at the bottom of her garden the shed itself is beginning to disintegrate and is pretty old and getting rotten in spots and so there are plans afoot to try and um, put a new shed there and it's obviously a long process she's got the most enormous stash you've ever seen and I am hoping to take you along on the journey of um, redesigning the new workshop as and when that happens so we were sorting out the fabric that she has got in her shed and there are like literally a lifetime of um, fabric stash and all the other bits and pieces trims notions she's got lots of sewing machines I mean it's just like amazing and we got all the fabric out from under the table because I suggested perhaps it would be a good idea to categorise it into different types so that when we come to reorganise again, we will be able to, um, she'll be able to find what she's looking for basically because when you've got that much stuff, you really don't remember what you've got. And through the process of getting all the stuff out of the shed, putting it out on the lawn, folding it up, putting it into different spots, I came across a piece of fabric that I just thought, oh my goodness, I've got to have that. And um, she was like, what? what? I didn't think you'd like that. That's totally not something I thought you'd like. But it is vintage fabric, I believe. It's actually, I think, furnishing fabric. Um, and I'm really hoping I've got enough, but it's kind of got this really cool retro style floral print all over it. And it feels to me very much like uh, sort of a heavy cotton. And I just think that is screaming to be an Ogden cami. How cute would that look with a pair of navy trousers for work and a little cardigan over the top or with a pair, even with a pair of like, you know, um, white or gray jeans, that would look really cute. It's quite a thick, it's obviously a furnishing fabric, so it is quite thick. So I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be suitable, but I really love the print on that. And I can't think of anything else to make with it other than an Ogden. I'm hoping there's enough. So I've probably got about a metre of that. So um, I might have to do the facings in a different uh, fabric or a coordinating fabric, but... If you've got any other ideas, I know I could probably make a bag or a purse or something out of this. That would be perfect for this weight of cotton. But I just really want to wear this print. It's so pretty. So there is that. Thanks, Mum, for letting me steal it. And then the next plan is actually a foot. So this is something that I've already cut out and I'm planning to sew in the near future. Uh, my little boy has not got many clothes. The girls, obviously, I hand down clothes from the eldest to the uh, middle girl and she's quite happy to wear what her sister's worn before. So when I sew things uh, for the eldest, the middle child benefits too. Whereas my son, he, um, I, he doesn't have as many clothes as they do. And um, this pattern is actually another tried and true pattern that I've made before, that I've talked about before. This is um, 3475, really cute butterick shirt and short set. And um, I've made this version before. This is version C. So in this packet, you have um, obviously got some shorts, so plain shorts and shorts with pockets on the side. Then you've got a border print shirt and uh, a plain shirt and then pockets on the shirt as well. And I've made this, like I say before, it's suitable for um, broadcloth, denim, um, linen, poplin, lightweight twills. Um, and I've made it before out of quilting cotton. And um, he really loves to wear a shirt. He feels really smart in the shirt. And so I've cut him the size six, no, the size five. So this pattern goes two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight. 
So I've gone for the size 5, which is the largest size in the packet. So this will probably be the last uh, couple of shirts that he gets out of this pattern before he gets too big. And um, like I said, I've already cut the fabric out, but I can show you one of the off cuts. And this is a grey, sharp print cotton. Again, quite a stiff cotton. Um, I'm not sure what the composition is. There's nothing written on the salvage. And I bought this fabric last year at the Knitting and Stitching Show. And I think I got it from Higgs and Higgs, but I can't be certain because it was a while ago. It's been in the stash waiting and um, he loves sharks, he loves dinosaurs, he loves uh, cars, he's a proper, you know, full on into all the boys stuff boy and um, yeah, so I've got the sharks cut out ready to make him a really cute shirt and I think that's going to go really nicely, that colour grey is going to go really nicely with sort of a navy blue um, short, so that may well be in the pipeline too. I'm trying not to make too many plans, but like I say, I, I know I'm not going to make all of these. I'm just telling you the sort of things that are getting me excited for sewing. A uh, couple more to go. So the kilo wrap dress, I had this pattern given to me for my birthday in April by my sister. And I have not made this yet. And it's perfect weather for a kilo at the moment. Um, you can make this out of a woven or a jersey. Um, I've seen variations of both online. So if you can see there, you've probably seen this pattern on the internet before. It's um, ties at the front or at the back. It's quite popular. It's quite flattering, I think. Um, so I have got some fabric to make that that I also bought at the Knitting and Stitching Show. And this came from M. Rosen and Sons, I think. Um, and it's a variated or variegated, I don't know what the right word is, stripe. Um, so navy blue and this nice sort of cream colour. And so I thought that would look really lovely. It was really inexpensive, this fabric. I can't remember how much they paid, something like 3 99 a metre or something. Um, and I've got quite a lot of it because I knew I'd need a decent amount to make the kilo. The only thing that's putting me off at the moment is the tracing of the pattern. So I'm not the most excited about tracing stuff, to be honest, but it's got to be done with these beautiful um, indie patterns because no one wants to cut that up, do they? And then make a mistake or need to size up or down or, yeah, so it's got to be traced. So that's the only thing that's stopping me at the moment. And then a couple more patterns that I found. Um, I've got dungarees on my mind. So either these for the kids or these for me. So I've got Birder Style 9464 and M7547. So this one you may have seen other people making. Lots of people make the trousers. Lots of people have made the dungarees. Um, I particularly was thinking of the dungaree shorts, so um, although I do like the dungarees too, it just it's kind of a it's kind of a difficult one as you uh, become more mature. You're not quite sure whether or not um, it's easily getawayable with wearing dungarees. So I have to say, my husband is not a fan of dungarees either but they're so comfortable. So I was thinking maybe if I went with a dungaree shorts, uh, they could be good in hot weather with a really cute like stripy t-shirt underneath like she's got on, but just not make the full length version. Or I go with the kids pattern, which is Birder style 9464 and make my son the dungarees here. Cause I think that little chap there just looks super cool in those dungarees. So you can see you've got three versions. You've got the short one, which there's a girl modeling on the envelope, or the mid-length one, which the little boy's got down here, or you can go for a full-length dungaree. So I was thinking actually the, um, it might be good to start with this pattern, although it's a birder, so, you know, my history with Birder is checkered. Sometimes the patterns, you know, 
are awesome and sometimes the construction techniques and instructions leave you scratching your head a bit but we'll see. So I've got this denim and this is really heavyweight non-stretch denim ready for something. So do I make myself dungarees? Do I make the kids dungarees? Or do I see actually whether I could make both? This is kind of a really lovely dark um, indigo grey, it's not really coming out very well on the screen but um, I got that from Fabricland when I did my massive haul, um, I'll link to that video up here. And then the last thing that's on my radar for summer, so this is not things that I'm going to make in the next month, it's possible for summer, are these culottes from Vogue. Vogue V9302. They say they're very easy. Um, I've never made a Vogue pattern before. We shall see. I'm hope so. I hope so because usually culottes are quite simple. I like this version here. It does say on the back that you can use um, crepe, gabardine, linen or denim and my fabric is a drill so I think that will be fine because it's kind of a similar weight to denim. And yeah, I just think a pair of these for work would be really awesome in the summer so that you're not quite so hot. And this is a, is it a drill? Maybe it's not actually. Oh, it does have a drill pattern to it. So it's stretchy though, which I'm thinking is going to work in my favour because that will make them slightly more comfortable. So uh, it's just a black polka dot, stretchy, trouser fabric I think they labelled it as in fabric land um, but it does feel quite soft it's got quite a bit of drape to it um, so yeah I think that will make a nice pair of culottes so that is the plan for that and that's it for today that's everything that I've got on my radar to sew over the summer um, I have also, so you guys who watch me regularly will know that I ran a poll on my community asking you guys what you wanted to see. And the two, um, I put three choices up and the two that got uh, the same amount of votes was a plans video and showing you how to use your Cricut machine or uh, explaining to you how a Cricut machine could help you with your sewing. So I am on my way trying to figure out how to record uh, an interesting video for you guys showing you how to use a Cricut when you're sewing. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for tuning in and sticking with me. It's been a long one and um, I will see you next time. Thanks then. Bye.